Hey there, good afternoon, faith friends. It's Kathy with Bodybuilder Ministry. It's time for our day 21 of our Harvest of Health series. We're on a 30 day journey to divine health. And it's time for this um, day 21. Wow, I can't believe we're here already. Um, I am sorry, I apologize for the very short notice about going live for this one. The whole entire day has kind of unraveled on me and um, I just know that it, it's now or never kind of thing. Like I came up with a realization of that a few minutes ago. It's like, oh, it's now or never. So <laughs> praise God, I'm glad that, that I was able to do now. So um, hey, Joanne, hey, Suzanne, my sweet girl. I'm glad that y'all are here to join me and we're able to hop on. I'm not gonna be keeping us very long today, this afternoon. So um, the um, title for today's blog is Don't Lie, Just Deny. Hmm. Sounds like we're going to be talking a little bit about faith. What do you think? Okay, so a couple of um, announcements. I want to do um, like a practical tip thing with y'all early on this time because I've been kind of forgetting to do that. Like I get going with the word and then I forget and I go, oh, I didn't remind, I didn't tell them that. So anyway, I want to um, do that real quick now. So I know you've probably heard before about um, counting calories and I don't know if y'all can see me very well or not. The lighting this afternoon is like, whoa, like I'm not getting to be outside. I feel like I look like I don't have a nose. Is that better? I don't know, it's weird, I like I'm going this way and that way, I don't know, whatever, y'all know what I look like, who cares, but um, I, um, I know you've heard of before of counting steps, counting calories, hey Angie, thanks for jumping on, and all that kind of stuff, well, here's something that I, um, the Lord spoke to me about many years ago, and I want to know, have you ever considered honest eating? You've probably heard of clean eating before. Well, this is not clean eating. This is honest eating. You, I'm sure, have heard about, your, be sure your sins will find you out. Well, that's the truth. Well, we're coming into that season for me during um, late October, November, December. I do lots and lots of baking and cooking and lots of the time it's casseroles that are involved and things like that. And there will be um, batters and all of those kinds of things. And so... Um, Hi, Michelle. Thanks for joining. So anyway, if you have that kind of thing that goes on in your world when you're um, in this season, you know, toward the end of the year and everything, it's very tempting to lick the beaters mm -hmm, or to taste this or taste that or, you know, once you get it done before you're going to serve it to somebody else, you got to taste it and make sure it's okay. Well, what if we were... Um, decided to bind ourselves somewhere in prayer. And, and I'm telling you, if you try to do it with will control, with willpower, willpower, you're gonna reach the end of you very quickly. I did. And so it was only through self-control that I was able to do this. But I just said, Father, I desire to be honest about what it is every bite that's going in my mouth because I may be doing well in some areas, but I'm still getting tripped up in some other places. And so um, I just prayed about it and asked him to help me and ask, I just yielded and said, Holy Spirit, I want you to help me and help, you know, develop in me self-control there and, um, you know, help me to be held, you hold me accountable and um, want to be an honest eater. Because, you know, a lot of times we think about it and think, well, nobody's really looking, so it doesn't really count. I mean, I've been guilty of that many times. Um, and I don't think I'm alone. So what if you were had to buy your bites? So that was one way that I that helped me a lot was if I had to write it down, like everything that went into my mouth. I did that one time where everything, no matter what it was, every morsel that went in my mouth, whether it was just a lick or a taste or whatever, I had to write it down. And I made myself do that um, and for a little while. And it's alarming at the end of the day what all you've actually spoken out of your mouth. Remember, we did the writing of it one day, or you were supposed to. That was an exercise. I hope you did it. But this one would be the um, seeing what all you actually put in your mouth. So you want to be really, really careful about that. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for jumping on. Um, the other thing would be if you were calling it buying bites. So imagine if you had to I don't know, you remember the day we talked about how hard it is to, like we talked about, is it worth the calories and how hard it is to burn off the, the number of calories that we put them in, but then you go to the whatever machine you're gonna get on and you got it works so hard to get them off. Well, what if you had to buy your bites? 
what if I had to be a quarter every time I was going to lick the beaters when I was baking a cake at the, like, after the cake's already in the oven? I don't want to gross anybody out here, but, you know, the cake's in the oven, and it's time to start cleaning up, and, um, oh, you are so sweet. Girl, that is, you have no idea how much you bless me by saying that, Stephanie, because we had a time with the Lord in the prayer room this morning. I feel like I have cried off every stitch of makeup I had on, but anyway, so thank you very much. I received that blessing. Um, so anyway, I just wonder what it would be like if we had to buy our bites. Like if you had to pay a quarter for every bite you were going to put in your mouth. That would make me stop and think. I mean, that really makes me stop and think. And, and my thing that still I still struggle with a little bit is popcorn because I got to a place where I couldn't eat it anymore, and I do love it. But then the Lord helped me to find my very own homemade recipe, which I am going to share with y'all before this is over with because it's the best popcorn in the whole entire world. And um, you can have seven cups of it, which is a lot of popcorn, and it's really, really yummy. So I'm going to share that with y'all at some point soon, this week, I promise, and um, so yeah, but just imagine those things, you know, like, what if you had to buy your bites, would that make you stop and think, somebody give me like thumbs up, would that make you stop and think, or if you too were to put in your notebook, you know, honest eating, and, and pray and ask God to help you, every time I'm going to put a bite in my mouth, make me stop and think about it before I actually put it in there, I mean, there's some accountability there, you know, it's really, it's really important. So anyway, that's the practical tip for this um, teaching for today, okay? So we're going to move on. Anybody that's new, um, I think I saw somebody that had, had joined us. Hey, Melanie, I'm glad you're here. Um, Michelle, I'm not sure if you've joined us before or not. I want to say welcome to you if you haven't um, been on, and I want to invite you to go back to the very beginning and um, start. I mean, you're welcome to stay with us today. I'm glad for you too, but I want to invite you to go back. You can go to the website, anybody else that's new um, as well, bodybuilderministry.com, one body, one builder. That's Jesus. And... Um, Go there and check it out. The whole Harvest of Health series is on there, and there are blogs, and now there are blogs that are being attached to those. I love saying that word. Y'all learned something new this week. It's so cool. And um, so that's pretty fun. And then you can, um, yeah, just go on this journey with us. And this journey, as I've called my little peeps all along, are we're on a little turtle journey here because we're staying low and we're going slow. And it's not about checklist, checking off, checking off, I got it done, I got it done. It's about change. We want to keep the change that's happening, transformation that's happening in us. So welcome, and I'm glad anybody that's new is here. All right, so... Um, let's just pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you so much for this day. And Lord, I know that as I was praying prior to um, jumping on live, that you gave me a very specific word to pray for this time. And so I'm just going to to look at these words that I wrote down as I heard you saying them to me, Lord. And I, I thank you now for understanding of faith, uh, just giving us an understanding of faith, what it is, how it works, how to make it work, how to grow it, how to use it. And um, I thank you, Lord, that your word causes us to be in health. And it's medicine. It's, it's medicine to all of our flesh. And we take that today, Lord, and we receive it and all of the good benefits from it. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, the blog for today, like I said, is called Don't Lie. Just an eye. So that's kind of confusing for people sometimes. So, hey, I got something going on in my body. Um, I don't really want to say that out of my mouth because I don't want to agree with it. I don't want to confess it. Um, somebody says, you know, how you doing? What did the doctor say? And you repeat it. And you'll read in the blog when I post it. I got caught in that cycle for a while. It was like, I'm not saying that anymore. But then some of my well-meaning friends, hey, what did the doctor say? How'd it go? And then I go back around again and go back around again. And so the blog today talks about holding fast to your confession or your profession for living by faith. And do you know that anybody that does something over and over and over and over, how do doctors get to be a professional? How, do, how does anybody get to be a professional, even a writer, uh, anybody? Because they do it over and over and over and over. So it's, it becomes who we are. So I consider myself a person of faith now. How? Why? Because I practice faith. It's something that, that I do. Um, do I do it 
right all the time? No, but we should be, like you take your kids to Little League practice. We should be practicing our faith. It should be working for us. That's what Bodybuilder Ministry, one of the things you'll see a lot of times, I'll hashtag faith fuel. You've got to keep your fuel faith because it gets low and we use it and you the same way that you can't work your muscles without like drinking a Gatorade on a really hot day you have to stay fueled you have to, to stay built up and encouraged and charged up because you know over in Proverbs it talks about if your faith is in the day of adversity if you faint then your faith is small we don't want small faith. The scriptures tell us that he has dealt to each one, somebody say each one, a mustard seed of faith. So if that's the case, then that means everybody has faith. You already have it. And a mustard seed, as we've learned, is the tiniest seed, but it has the capacity to produce the largest tree. So there's no cap on like, we're never going to get there. Scriptures talk about us going from faith to faith and from glory to glory on this journey that we're on. So, um, that is really, really important. Now, there is, on my website, there is a, um, oh, what is it called? Childlike faith. There's a, it's a... Uh, I think they call it a widget, but it's a little orange and yellow box. Maybe I'll post it here for you guys, but it's just a, a little blog that I wrote on what faith is. So for anybody who has any questions about, well, she talks about faith a lot and working your faith and just faith it and faith the facts and everything. But what exactly does that mean? So I want to talk a little bit about that today, okay? First of all, it's very important that you decide and make your election 100% sure what is it that you're believing God for. What am I believing God for today? What are you believing God for today? We have to decide what is it we're believing God for and write that down. Then we wanna go to the scriptures, find out what does it say about that, and then we wanna say that over our situation. So we're agreeing with the word and what God says about it and not agreeing with the world. So it's really important that we do that. And you know, whatever that situation is, we're talking about health here. So in our physical bodies, it's if you can, can identify it, you don't have to be able to do that, but if you can identify it, then you can say, okay, that is the Goliath in my life and it's going down. And I want to encourage you because I hit a wall recently where the Goliath was definitely named and definitely going down. But then it was like, well, why did, what's this wall? Why did we, why did we stop here? Why, why are we not continuing to move forward? Lord, why is this thing still trying to raise its ugly head? Well, remember David didn't just slew Goliath. He chopped off his head. So you've got to see this thing, chase that rabbit all the way to the hole, if you will. Okay, so it's very, very, very important. So right now we're going to talk a little bit about faith, and there's no better place to go than the scriptures. And so I want to look for a second now. I got stuff all around y'all here. You see me looking every which way. Um, we're going to look at Hebrews 11.1. 1, and it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I heard the word substance of things, and then I heard the word evidence of things. So faith is actually something, okay? And it has the capacity to produce something, okay? But now, who is it when we have faith in God? Jesus tells us in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. Now, I'll be out of the picture probably for just a minute, but this is a real good visual, I feel like. I just feel like Holy Spirit wants me to do this. So I'm coming in. I'm going to sit down and talk to you guys, okay? So I have faith in God that this chair is going to hold me up, but do I walk up to this chair and go... Hope that, don't, hope it don't fall. Oh, I hope this chair's going to... I don't do that. I just walk up. I have faith in God. I just walk up, and what do I do? I just sit down in the chair. Ooh, nice and comfy here. I do the same thing when I go to bed at night. Why? Because my belief is not in the chair. My belief is in God that he's going to hold me up. Where is the power there? The power is in God. But at the same time, the power is in this chair. See, this chair has the capacity to hold me up, but I had to believe that it was going to. And so it's very important that we know how to 
work our faith. I could go to the gym and just jump on any old machine there and just start working out, working out. But if I don't know what I'm doing, there's a real good chance I could hurt myself. So it's very important that we have an understanding of these things. Now, when you walk in your house at nighttime and it's dark, do you pray before you turn the light on? I don't. I just walk over to the switch and turn it on. Why? Because I know that when I turn that switch on that the light's going to come on. How do I know that? Because I paid the bill. Well, how do I know that they're... I know the power company. I know I paid them. I know that they said we have a contract, that they've run power to my house. I know when I turn the switch on, the power's going to be there. Like, I know that. So, I need to know my father and his word to that same degree. I need to know that I know that I know. He said he has a plan in Jeremiah 29, 11. He said that he wishes above all things for me to be in health and to prosper even as my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions prosper, which that's over in 3 John 2. So it's so important. You can't, it's hard to have faith if you don't know. And I can't believe for anything that's going to happen if I don't have faith. And so we have to decide anytime there's something lacking in me, I'm like, well, Father, help my unbelief. Clearly, I'm not believing enough here. I need to hear more. I need to, because you know, in the scriptures we hear, you read about in, over in Luke, especially where many, many times people would come and it says in the scriptures, I wish I'd look that one up for y'all. I I think it's in chapter six, I'm not sure, but it says the people came to hear and be healed. They came to hear and be healed. So if we're not, if I'm not receiving my healing, then maybe I need to do more hearing. Maybe I need to do more believing. See, that's hard. That's a hard pill to swallow sometimes because we don't want to have to accept responsibility that it might be something we're doing. But God, I need you to this. But God, I want you to that. But God, I need, oh God, please do this. But he's already done all that he's going to do about our situation. And he went up there and he did such a fantastic job by sending Jesus to take all of our sin, all of our iniquity, all of our pain, all of our sickness, all of our suffering upon himself on the cross. He... And, and we can read about that in the scriptures. But, you know, he's already done all of that. So now it's up to us to spend time with him and time in his word and to learn that so that we can say, Father, you said, and I believe what you said. So what does it look like to faith the facts? Well, for me right now, Pairing with what we talked about yesterday. If you missed yesterday, I want you to go back to Friday before you watch Saturday because those two days are going to kind of be real closely linked together. Um, but it's so important that we, like, so I, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. But for me right now, so it's this arm. So yesterday I was talking about, it's called going up, and I was talking about how I was speaking to my knee some years ago, and by faith, my knee was made whole. You know, we read in scriptures where Jesus' healing goes out of him and a, and a woman is made whole, the woman that issued blood. And he says to her daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. Faith in what? Faith in him. She sat at home waiting and wondering. She had spent all she had. She had done all she could do. She'd gone to every doctor there was. There was nothing left to do. But she sat in her chair and she thought, the master's coming. I'm unclean. I'm not supposed to go out. The master's coming. I heard he can make me whole. I'm unclean. I'm not supposed to go out. The master's coming. I know that he's the answer. I know this is, I know. I know what I've heard. I know what I believe. If I could just but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. The master's coming. I got to get there. Like that was her thing. Like she made up her mind. She decided there was nothing going to hold her back. She was going to get there. And she made up her mind. All she do is just touch just the hem of his garment. And so it was her faith on her decision, what she believed in what she'd heard about him and who he was. And so as the son of God, and she believed that. And so that's what we have to do. We have to decide what are we believing God for? So for me right now, I'm believing God for my arm to be loosed 
in the name of Jesus. So yesterday was so amazing that the title was going up and I had spoken to a knee before and commanded it to go up. So after that, I started taking that exact same medicine. I was like, well, the word was good for that then and the word is good for that now because God does not change. So I'm putting my arm in the position that I've been told I have to put it in, not the position I'm wanting to put it in to compromise it. But I'm telling it, going up. And I've been forcing it to do what I haven't been able to do with it. So I'm making it go up this way, and I'm making it go up this way, and I'm making it go up that way, and it hurts. But by faith, it is being loosed, and I am acting like it's already done. And it is so much better today than it was Friday when I received not such a great report from two, two different physicians. So by faith, we have to act. So decide for yourself, maybe it's a blood sugar, maybe it's a thyroid number, maybe it's a um, something the scales say, maybe it's a, a body part, maybe it's your heart or your lungs or, or maybe it's something with your, with your eyes or your ears. I don't know what it is for you, but you have to decide where your health is concerned. What is it that you're believing God for? Write it down in your goals section under your notebook. That in your under that section in your notebook is so important that we write it down and make up your mind to find out exactly what the word says about it, and then don't be moved off of that. Not moved, immovable, unshakable until you're thinking like, okay, I'm going to become a professional at this. I'm going to keep saying it and saying it and doing it and doing it. And how can I do this? Because I know that 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 it works. He's faithful. He's done it before. He's already, it's already done. It's just a matter of me receiving it and my body manifesting it. It's not like I've got to do something um, there's no method to me receiving my healing. There's no um, formula or anything like that. Like, I don't believe that at all. But somewhere in me, there has been doubt or unbelief. There has been somewhere that I've been blinded, something that I've not heard, something that I've not yet understood. And But now I feel like I got it. I'm like, oh, praise God, I got it. And so I'm not going back. I'm going forward. I'm moving ahead. I'm moving ahead. I'm moving ahead. So I want to encourage you to do that today, okay? So the other place that I want to look at in Scripture today is over in Romans 12, too. Because you see, the world, we're in the world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. And so it's very important that we, because we're in the world, but we're not called to be of it, that we have a transformation that happens in us. And how can that happen? only by the renewing of our mind. So it says in Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye, ye may prove what is that good mm, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Sounds like he's got some pretty great stuff in store for us, okay? Now, I love... Um, Y'all know I like to look at all the different versions. I'm trying to remember which one I wanted to read to you. I think it was the Amplified. Do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. That is shouting ground, y'all. That is an amazing word right there. So see, even Friday's message, when a question came up and I pondered the answer, I was like, you know, have I been understood to think that? Because I don't know that I think that. I think that I believe this. So see, when we believe a lie, it's so easy to continue to believe another lie and another lie and another lie. But once you encounter truth, then you're like, wow. And you just continue to build on that, build on that and build on that. And it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's amazing. And so I, I want to leave y'all, I think, with this last thought, which is kind of gross. So 
I'm sorry that it's gross. I apologize for that in advance. But do you know the easiest way, the best way? This is how I think about it. When I think about a lie, I always say, if you got a lie, flip it over and you'll have your answer. And there's the truth. It's the opposite of what the lie is. But some people have a hard time wrapping their mind around that. They can't seem to understand. They're like, but that feels like I'm lying if I say the opposite of that. It feels like I'm lying. Well, you know, there was no light in the beginning and God said light be or let there be light and light was, okay? So he knew he had the power to create that. He believed he had the power to create that. And, you know, every mountain that we face in our life, how did it get there? Words. We, we build all kinds of mountains in our lives with words. But lies have to be flushed, okay? How can you flush out a lie with the truth? Now, the best way to overpower and get rid of a lie is to put in more truth than there is lie. That's how you have to get rid of it. So, you think about, here's the gross part, sorry about this, but think about it. A toilet holds, it's a bowl of water, and it holds a tank of water, and it's all considered to be clean water. Um, you know, it, it came in from your water company or your well or wherever, your pipes, and it's, you know, considered to be clean water that's going to wash away the toxins and the waste when it is full of waste, okay? So, if that's the case, would you, say, would you agree or disagree that the bowl of water was clean and now it's been has it's full of waste but the only way to get rid of that and make that bowl of water be clean again is to all the water that's in there's got to go out and the whole tank of water which is twice as much water that's in the tank has in the bowl has got to go through it and you know it goes down like one time and then two times and it just keeps rinsing and it keeps going and it keeps going and then it fills up and it's there it is a bowl of clean water again I mean, that's kind of a gross thing to think about, but basically it's like this. Your mind is not, not intended to be a portalette. It is not intended to have waste just go in and go in and go in, and it comes in through our eyes and through our ears, and we say things, and then we hear it, and we hear things, and then we say it, and it just goes round and round and round and round and round, and it's just before you know it, you've just got all this stuff. That's why he says we need to renew our mind. And if we don't renew our mind, then it cannot, we cannot be transformed. And how do we renew our mind? What we're doing right now is an excellent way to renew our mind, but we have to get in the Word. We have to get in the Word. We have to read the Word. We got to talk about the Word. We need to talk to the to Father about the Word and say, Lord, you said this, and Father, you said that, and you said it, and I believe it. I trust you because you're trustworthy. And sometimes we get a play, get to a place where we just got to, remember when you were a kid, that whole trust fall thing, like, are we ever able to do that? I I think I finally learned how to do that. You just got to trust fall. Trust fall on Jesus. He's got you. And he's not going to let you go or let you down. So I'm going to leave you all today with that practical tip we start, talked about at the beginning. If you missed that, I want you to go back and get it, okay? Buying bites or honest eating. Write that down, okay? And start writing down. Maybe you could, could write down every bite that goes in your mouth for about 24 hours. And I guarantee you some things will change in your life because when you read that, Woo, it's kind of alarming. And guess what? Can't flush that one away. <laughs> You've got to have to get on. You have to do something different to get rid of that. So um, that's really important that we remember that we've got to renew our minds. And so I want to encourage you, Jay. I'm going to try to see if I can put the um, Childlike Faith blog on this um, group because I would love for y'all, anybody else has questions about faith, to be able to, to check that out and read it and everything. And tomorrow is going to be day 22. If you don't already, um, tune in to 99.9 .9 FM from 8 to 10 AM on Monday mornings. I want to invite you now to do that and listen to your morning manna. They will bring you some joy and get your Monday off to a great start. So we will go live after that. So um, I'll just say 1030. Um, so 1030 for tomorrow morning. And I love you all. I'm glad that you were here and were able to join me. I apologize for it being such short notice today, but um, this has been good. I pray it's been a blessing to you. It has definitely encouraged my heart and built me up up and um, that's what bodybuilder ministry is all about right so it's, it's not just here for 
any one of us in particular is here for all of us. And I am very, very thankful for the body of Christ and to be in this body with all of you. So for now, I want to remind you to choose to be encouraged and know that you are loved. Bye.